Stories are everywhere, but the nugget that you have to begin with is a feeling that you have, something in your heart, because there's no way that you're gonna be able to see a story through to the screen or whatever, unless it's something that's like in your soul. Strikes have been sweeping across the country lately, and I hope you're paying attention because they do matter and you should care. Earlier this year, half of my daughter's teachers had to teach from home because their own kids who attend LA public schools had to stay home because the district was on strike. Y'all, imagine trying to teach high school, just in general, like how hard that would be. But like, imagine trying to do that with Bluey playing in the background. Oakland teachers were on strike for seven days in May. United Airline pilots were picketing at airports. Other airlines' as pilot unions have authorized strikes, hoping to get pay increases in new contracts. Driving around LA, groups of Writers Guild of America, WGA strike picketers are posted up outside of studios. Labor unions, they enable workers to negotiate for higher wages and better working conditions. And they're not new. The founding of labor unions dates back to the 18th century, but we have seen a bit of a comeback in the 2020s. In 2022, 10.1% of wage and salary workers were a member of a union. The union's ongoing purpose is to advocate for the fair treatment of its members. And as a last resort, the union may decide to strike in response to unfair or unsafe labor conditions. That said, union members must vote for a strike before one can be authorized. And just because it gets authorized doesn't mean that it's necessarily gonna happen. This just means the union has the authority to hold a strike should negotiations for a contract fall through. Okay. That's a bit of backstory on unions. Let's fast forward to where we are right now. Starbucks employees are unionizing. Pilot unions are authorizing strikes. And several other unions across the country and world are making headlines with strikes. But I wanna focus on the writer strike because I think it'll really help paint a pretty clear picture of the ripple effect that strikes can have on the larger economy. Hollywood writers are on strike after negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers failed. And this alliance represents a lot of the big Hollywood studios that you've heard of, like think your Netflix, your Amazon, Apple, your Disney. One of the major demands of the strike is higher pay. Writers are proposing changes that would, it would rein in AI, adjust pay structures, guarantee a minimum pay for streaming and other regulations that would cost the studios roughly $429 million per year. Just to paint a picture of where they are in negotiations, the studio's counter proposals were $86 million. So yeah, there's a tiny bit of disparity there. The Writers Guild is made up of real people, y'all, just trying to make a living. People like award-winning screenwriter Hernan. The Hollywood machine can't support itself, right? So the corporations, in the interest of turning a quick buck, of making bigger profits, um, they've cut out everybody that makes their media. It's been death by a million cuts, right? Um, on the feature side, they're, they're, they're forcing us to like, you know, have face endless drafts of a script. And so like, by the time that you get paid on the, you know, if you have like a second step deal or whatever, you basically worked for l below minimum wage for years. Here I am like, uh, trying to just trying to survive <laughs> at the same time, just trying to like make sure that I meet my months. The misconception is that we're all like, I mean, God, we live in LA and like we all have houses and like, oh my God, I will tell you, there's maybe like two writers I know that have houses. Everybody else is like <laughs> stuck renting an apartment in the shittiest part of town because like, again, we do this for love. <laughs> it's that simple. I am so tired of being poor. At least I've got enough saved up for the next few months because I think this is going to take a few months. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully, you know, we'll come out of this with a better deal with it. And I know that like we're asking, I'm asking a lot because I would love for this industry to support its creators, right? How hard is that an ask? Uh, <laughs> we, we only make the media. Almost immediately after the strike began, late night shows stopped taping live episodes. Other popular network TV and streaming shows have paused production as well. Many crew members have joined the picket lines in, you know, in solidarity with their writing comrades. 
The big question many people are probably asking is, is everyone still getting paid during a strike? And the answer is not a clear yes or no. Employers aren't required to pay employees who aren't providing the service that they were hired to provide. Bringing it back to the writer's strike, employed writers will not receive a normal paycheck while on strike in most cases, but they are still entitled to receive any residual checks owed from projects that they have already completed. No, wait, can we talk about residuals for a second, just like really quick? Because that's one of the grievances of writers. Y'all, look at this residual check I was lent. One cent. Try paying your agent 10% of one penny. But I started this whole conversation by saying, why should you care? And maybe you don't care about the economy. You should, but maybe you don't care about the livelihood of others. Y'all, you should. But just in general, the writer's strike is going to impact the release of upcoming shows and television. The impact could be minimal or it could be, uh, it could increase depending on how long it lasts. Say for instance, you're halfway through your season. You could potentially have all your episodes written if your production is at the beginning of a season and you're just digging into scripts, then it could hugely impact. Um, depending on how long it lasts, uh, team members could start being put on hiatus or let go. Um, so depending on where a production is, it could have different impacts. Some shows have continued production with remaining scripts on hand, but many have postponed. Producers aren't able to work with WGA writers to get scripts written, edited, they can't get them rewritten, or any other paid work that goes along with scripting content. Also, one of the key considerations that union members want addressed is better upfront fees to compensate for lost residuals with streaming services. Depending on how negotiations play out, this could result in yet another fee increase from your favorite streaming platform down the road to balance it out. But I know you, you do care about the economy. So let's shift over to the greater impact that strikes have. All in, there are about 2.5 million people working within the film industry. And then there are the industries that support the entertainment industry. Hollywood pumps millions of dollars per day into food establishments, hotels, and construction companies, directly impacting the wage workers that work within those sectors. It's florists, it's makeup artists, it's caterers, it's delivery people, it's all of that. And so, um, really hopeful that the pressure on um, the studios to come to some agreement with the Writers Guild will be um, a swift one. When I very first started in the industry, I came to Los Angeles in 2009. And so the industry was just recovering from the 2007 writer strike, which lasted over 100 days at that time. And I was really not aware of what a deep and lasting impact that strike was going to have on our industry. And to be clear, a pause in the industry isn't only pay out of California workers' pockets. Major Hollywood productions shoot all over the country and the world. Think Miss Congeniality, that filmed in Texas. Stranger Things films in Georgia. Forrest Gump in South Carolina. All in, the last writer strike back in 2007 cost the economy $2 billion. So there's been talk about, um, not just talk, but there's been action about the Screen Actors Guild, uh, SAG-AFTRA, the union that um, employs and has thousands and thousands of members across the world, um, that they may also uh, potentially strike. And so they've asked for what is called an authorization to strike. If this happens in companion with the existing WGA strike, or if that writer strike is still happening, it's gonna have a profound impact on the viewer and the consumer in general. It's gonna have a profound impact on the advertising industry. It's going to have a ripple effect that could potentially be um, very detrimental for, um, thousands and thousands of people. Let's look at what you can do if your union is considering going on strike, or if say your kid's school district might strike and you can't go to work. I've said this before and I'm saying it again, start an emergency fund right now. Even if the thought of a union 
strike is not on the precipice at all for you. That emergency fund will float you through a strike, through losing your job, or other potential financial setbacks. And this might mean realistically taking stock of your budget and scaling back on spending to be sure that you can set aside money for your savings. But you will be grateful for the reallocation should the need to use that money ever occur. Communicate with your creditors. Talk to your utility company and other creditors to discuss options for alternative payment plans. You should also hold off on major purchases or accruing more debt on your credit card. You don't know, you might need to use that card or take out a loan to get by during a strike. Also, keep your credit score in mind. You may need to charge necessities to a credit card, which would impact your utilization. So be sure to pay bills on time so that your score doesn't suffer further. Even if you can't pay the balance in full, paying the minimum due will help you maintain your on-time payment status. Stock up on food and medicine. Use your health insurance to stock up on any medication that you need or your kids, your partner, whatever, while you can. It's also a good idea to take a trip to your favorite big box place, your Costco, whatever, and stock up on non-perishable food items. And speaking of health insurance, let's go back there. Be sure to get in any doctor's visits while you can. This includes your dentist, your eye appointments, whatever. If you do end up being impacted by a strike, COBRA or Medicare could be options to help you maintain health coverage during the unemployment gap. Talk to your union reps about financial assistance programs. Many unions have grants that they will issue to members to, you know, just to help make ends meet during a strike. Others have loans with low to no interest that they can make available for members facing hardships during the strike. And then if the strike goes on for a long time or if your situation becomes, you know, more dire, there are other resources that you could tap into as well, like local food banks, religious groups, or 211.org. And you might also consider getting a side gig to bring in some cash. Y'all know that regardless of what you do, how, what work you do, I'm a big old fan of a side hustle or just another means of income coming in. So that's my little rant. In general, we have a lot of things that are going on in the United States right now. It's not just the writers that are uh, on strike. It's not just the possibility of actors possibly wanting to strike. There is also a possibility of UPS going on strike on, you know, there, there are, there's the debt ceiling issue that's happening right now. When you've got trillion dollar industries like the entertainment industry, possibly grinding its gears to a halt, this is going to have a ripple effect on the economy in general. It's going to have a bottom line effect on, as I mentioned earlier, advertising, commercials, products, you know, how those dollars are going to be spent, what jobs are going to be either put on hold, are going to go away, are going to suffer um, a big impact that, again, just kind of makes us, you know, get back up off the sidewalk and try to dust ourselves off again and put those feet back in front of us, which was what we've just been trying to do post pandemic. So it's not a doom and gloom scenario. My hope is that both the studios, the writers, the actors, that people can come to a consensus that's fair. Anyway, y'all, there's a lot going on with labor unions throughout the country right now. And the impacts are gonna spread across different industries for the foreseeable future. Whether you're directly connected to a union or not, doesn't matter, stay informed, pay attention. And like I always say, make those smart money moves. Hey, I'm Nikita, thanks so much for watching Control Finance. I know I had to give you some tough love when I said start an emergency fund, but if you have questions about that, or if you just wanna understand how to rein in your budget, do a search here on the Nerd Wallet channel for budgeting. We have some great resources to help you get that started and help build up that emergency fund.